and good morning everybody how you guys doing hope you're a fantastic morning wherever you are in the big wide world we are back we're live we are streaming and today of course is a very special day first and foremost it is of course i believe international chess day today is july 20th so that's what we're going to start with now obviously what would i like to talk about today it's been a slow news day of course you guys it's been a very very slow news day now when i woke up this morning about 8 30 i did actually see the news so it's not like i haven't been awake for a couple uh for a couple of hours um now I know there are gonna be a lot of trolls obviously but we're gonna go through the article and then I will respond to a lot of different stuff okay first and foremost we have the news breaking breaking Magnus Carlsen will not defend the world championship title it's an article on chess.com GM Magnus Carlsen will not defend his world championship title against GM Jan Napomniachi next year Carlson announced his decision on a podcast on Tuesday, which we will listen to, by the way, afterwards. Why is my Slack still beeping at me? I don't know. Anyway, um, according to current regulations, FIDE Canada's tournament winner, Jan Napomniachi, will now play the world championship against Canada's runner-up, GM Ding Laurent. I've spoken to people on my team. I've spoken to FIDE. I spoke to Jan as well. The conclusion is very simple. I'm not motivated to play another match, said Carlson. I don't have a lot to gain. I don't particularly like it. And although I'm sure a match would be interesting for historical reasons, I don't have any inclination to play, and I will not simply play them and I will simply not play the match. Carlson thus confirmed the earlier doubts he'd expressed on December 14th, 2021 and later repeated after playing five world championship matches he is not enjoying them anymore it's been an interesting ride since I decided to play the Kansas in 2013 which was to be honest on kind of a whim I just decided it could be interesting and ever since the world championship title has given me a lot has given me a lot and opened a lot of doors and I'm happy about that um well obviously the matches themselves have been interest have been at times interesting at times a little bit of fun the Norwegian star leaves the door open to return for a match one day, but it's not likely. I don't rule out participation in the future, but I also wouldn't count on it. Okay. All right. So we will, of course, cover the, um, cover the, we will cover the podcast as well, but, but first and foremost, we're going to get through the article first. Okay. Carlson made his statements in the first episode of the new podcast, the Magnus effect. Okay. During the FIDE Canada's tournament, Carlson had a meeting with FIDE's president, Arkady Dvorkovich, and Director General Emil Satovsky, which apparently didn't have enough effect to convince Carlson to defend his title for a fifth time. Now, that's actually a little bit interesting, because certainly when you, when, you, um, when you did hear about it during the candidates tournament, it seemed like it was not really clear what was going on, but you would have a decision. There was a lot of negotiation. But, but definitely from uh, Magnus' side or from his team, it sounds like he had basically told them then that he was not going to play. So when they said, said July 20th, um, I don't know what exactly was going on. Because the way they've, they've spun it is that it was essentially he's told Fide, I'm done, just done, on, on the 11th or wh whenever it was in July. All right. Talking about this meeting in Madrid, Carlson said, I did not have any demands or suggestions for that meeting. They did have a couple of suggestions, but the gist of it was that I was there to tell them that I would not defend my title in the next WCC match. So again, like I said, it's very interesting um, the way that they, they say this, because again, when we were at the candidates, Emil definitely made it sound like there was negotiation ongoing. There was stuff that was being discussed where it sounds like Magnus said, no, I'm done at that, at that point in time. Um, Dvorkovich told chess.com that he respects the world champion's decision and confirmed that according to the rules, there will now be a Ding Napomniachi match. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, Ding and Napomniachi will now play the world championship. As it turned out, Carlson never really changed his mind on a feeling he has had for a while. Ultimately, the conclusion stands, one that I'm pretty comfortable with, one that I thought a lot about for a long time. Now, he said, I would say more than a year, probably a year and a half, long before the last match. Is my heart fine? Yes, you guys. I am actually not annoyed at all. I will tell you... Um, um, I was going to wait till we get through the end of the article, but I'll, I'll jump in right now. The person right now, I will tell you, the person who probably is very, very upset and really disappointed is Fabiano. Because I, as I've said before, for Fabiano, he was on plus two in clear second place, and he could have probably coasted to the end of the tournament. He could have drawn like one game, or not drawn one game, probably drawn a few games, won a game, got into a very solid plus three, but he thought second place was not in the equation. And for Fabiano, I think he's the one guy right now who is like, probably like you don't you don't want to be him right now um that 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 is that is for sure the one person right now who is very 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 unhappy uh because Fabiano was definitely the player who was in position but he thought first was all he had to, all he could play for so he went all in lost a bunch of games didn't really go his way at the end uh but I guarantee you if Fabiano knew that second place was good enough trust me he would have been able to shut it down been very solid and he would have finished in second place um, do I want to cry? Why would I want to cry, you guys? Because the catch-22 here is that if I had actually finished second, I'm pretty sure Magnus would have played. 
So there, it, it, when you guys start making it sound like, oh, like I could have finished second place. Yes, if I had drawn the game, I could have finished second place. That's what that goes without saying. But the fact is, I'm pretty sure Magnus would have played then. So when, when people think it's like some kind of like some kind of random thing, like it's it's like the catch 22. That's why for Fabiano, I, no, let's just get through the article before 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 we go off on all this stuff. Um, okay. Uh, what, where were we? Um, ultimately, the conclusion stands one I'm pretty comfortable with, one that I thought a lot about for a long time now. He said, I would say more than a year, probably a year and a half long before the last match. It didn't help that Napomniachi qualified for a second match with Carlson, who had stated earlier they preferred an opponent of the new generation, in particular GM Ali Reza Ferusha. Four championships to five, it didn't mean anything to me. It was nothing, said Carlson in yesterday's podcast. I was satisfied with the job they'd done. I was happy I had not lost the match, but that was it. Now, that's interesting. Um... Carlson also repeated once again that he intends to continue playing, just not matches. Just so there's no ambiguity here, I'm not retiring from chess. I'm going to be an active player. I'm leaving later today to go play Cro to go to Croatia to play the Grand Chess Tour. From there on, it's going to from there on, I'm going to go to Chennai to play the Olympiad, which is going to be a lot of fun. And the Norwegian team is seated as number four there. And to Miami, which is going to be one of the real highlights of the year, the FTX Crypto Cup, which is going to be awesome. And right after that, the Singfield Cup. Which is also going to be awesome. Um, there, there, there are a lot of feelings around right around my wait. There are a lot of feelings around mine right now that I have to deal with. Said Ding in a first reaction chess.com. But I'm very excited about playing in a world championship match to fight for the crown next year. All right, calling from Barcelona where Ding is staying at a friend's apartment. He revealed that he got COVID right after the candidates tournament and therefore hasn't been able to fly back to China yet. Now fully recovered, he will travel back about two weeks from now. The Chinese player is surprised about Carl's decision. Of course. Now, again, everyone is surprised. And I'll, I'll, once we get through the article, I'll, I'll get into that. But yeah, it's not surprising. Nobody believed that Magnus was not going to play. At the end of the day, everyone thought he was going to play. That's, that's the reality. Um, whether you want to say it was me, whether you want to say it was Fabian or Ding, everybody believed that Magnus was going to play. Um, I knew he had doubts, but I expected him to play. But I understand it also. Being world champion means a lot of responsibilities. There are a lot of things to handle. All right. Um, Ding pointed out the similarities with Yuzuru Hanyu, the Japanese figure skater who also yesterday announced retirement from competition, but promised to pursue his goals in exhibitions instead. The chess world has seen previous moments in history when the world champion did not defend his title. In 1946, GM Alexander Aliakin died as the reigning champion. Um, a world championship tournament organized two years later was won by GM Mikhail Botvinnik. In 1975, GM Bobby Fischer could not agree with FIDE on the match format and lost his title to Canada's winner, GM Anatoly Karpov. In 1993, GM Gary Kasparov left FIDE and played a world championship under the Professional Chess Association instead. This led to a schism in the chess world, which lasted until 2006, when GM Vladimir Kramnik won a reunification match with FIDE champion GM Veselin Topolov. It's not an ideal situation. The best player is not defending his title, and creating your own organization is also not great, said Ding. Adding... Adding, it's better for the fans that the best players fight for the world championship. And Magnus has, of course, been the best player throughout the years. We came to a new era. Ding said that he hopes Carlson will return one day and felt that reaching the highest possible competition also gives himself a new responsibility. I have to improve my English now. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty witty. Um, yeah, so so here's here's what, I, what I'll say. We're going we're gonna to watch a podcast. Obviously, there are a couple things I'm going to say. Um, first and foremost, I... Again, obviously everyone was wrong with what um with 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 our assessment of whether Magnus would play or not. Um so like even though I feel very confident in saying that if I had finished second place, I think Magnus would would uh have played the match. There is no guarantee, but I still feel pretty confident that Magnus would have. So again, there's no way of knowing what would have transpired, what wouldn't have transpired, but I do believe that. So that's the first things first that I'm gonna say about myself. Secondly, what I will say is I do not have any regrets in terms of that final game. I know a lot of people are think, oh, I'm supposed to be like super mad, super angry. One of the biggest reasons I did really well in the candidates, um was because basically I didn't let the game, I didn't let the losses affect me at all. Now, I, that is one thing that's very different for me versus in the past, where a lot of times in tournaments, if I lost the game early, I would generally, I do okay, but I wouldn't be able to rally and come back. So um, for myself, I'm not actually that upset. I am very surprised that that Magnus is not playing. Um, as I said before, I think every it caught everyone by surprise. 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, um, why, uh, why I ultimately think Magus didn't play. I think there are a couple of reasons. I think first and foremost, it's the fact that in these matches, players are becoming extremely solid. When you look at the match against Fabiano and the match against Jan, for that matter, both the players are playing the Petrov every game. And when you have to look at the Petrov over and over nonstop and you're struggling to find ideas, it gets really monotonous. It feels like you're not even really playing the game anymore. And even in D4, when Magnus played the uh, Catalans, those are very dry too. Now, he did win a game. He did win that critical game in Game 6, which sort of opened the floodgates, but it was still very, very grindy. Jan was very solid, just like Fabiano was. Um, and so because of that, I think, he, I think he just doesn't want to spend all his time studying one or two openings where players are just going to play to draw every single game. Um, and then, of course, on the other side, when you have the black pieces, you also have to be very careful because if your opponent's going to play like that, you can't afford to ever slip and lose one game either. So in my in my opinion, I think that's the underlying reason is he just got tired of having to prepare for these very, very drawish, very boring, very slow lines. Um, and I think that's the that's the underlying underlying reason. Then you have the long match. It's, it's not really about chess, which I think is why he why he wanted more rapid chess or he wanted something a little bit different. Because for example, in rapid, it's not quite the same. You can still do a lot of preparation, but there's more room for creativity. You can you can have much more variety in the openings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that's the under I think that's the underlying biggest reason that he's not interested in playing a match after having won quite a few of them. So I could be wrong. Obviously, no, nobody knows exactly what is going through Magnus's head, but I do believe that. Um, I don't follow how Ikaru coming in second would affect Magnus's decision. Um, I think ultimately it would, it would affect it because at the end of the day, and this again, people are going to start using you know Pago. But at the end of the day, um, I mean, the two players who are most recognizable in the world of chess at the moment are Magnus and myself. Furthermore, the idea the idea of a world where I could be a world chess champion and Magnus is not not the world chess champion, there's no way that Magnus would would really be okay with that in my in you know, at least based on my understanding of the situation. So again, I could be wrong on that. You never really know, uh, again, what was going through Magnus's head. But as I said, I still think that he, he, he almost certainly would have played a match if I had finished second. Again, you never know. There's no way of going back, changing anything. It is what it is, which is exactly why when people think that I'm supposed to somehow be super angry or any of that stuff, I'm not because you don't know what would have happened. You can't go back and change things in time. I think everybody wishes they could change things if you could go back, but you can't. And it's just, it's a bad, it's a, it's a bad mentality and a weak mindset to have um, thinking, thinking about such things. Cause all you do is waste time thinking about things that are not productive whatsoever. So that's, that's what I will say about myself. Now, as I said, for Fabi, we will get to the podcast, of course, very shortly. But for Fabiano, he is the one guy right now who has to be feeling absolutely terrible. And the reason I say that is because if Fabiano had finished second, I don't think Magnus... I think the difference between me finishing second and Fabiano finish, finishing second is quite different. I think if Fabiano finishes, finishes second, Magnus still very likely makes the same decision. But... But... For Fabiano, having known that with the sort of that that factor there, um, he could have gotten second place. Fabiano should have gotten second place in the tournament if he had sort of been much more solid in those last like three to four rounds. Um, now, obviously, Fabiano, like everybody else, he misjudged the situation. He thought Magnus was going to play no matter what, um, and he was wrong. So Fabiano is the one guy right now who has to be feeling absolutely horrible 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 with what with what he's reading this morning i mean I, I would be sick to my stomach if i were him so that's that's what i would say the two players myself and fabiano who did not actually get to second place um for ding obviously it's it's great for him to have a chance to play on the on the flip side however the one thing is i would be very surprised um does it not sting that you were a draw away from second place it stings that the draw would have gotten me second place for me i'm very annoyed that i didn't get second place just because second place in the candidates would have been a great result but it doesn't sting me in the sense of thinking that like oh i would have gotten a match because i don't think i would have gotten a match so um that's that's just the way i look at it just second place would have been like the i, I when i look at the tournament i felt like that was the best i could have done so that, that's why that's why it's uh that, that's why it stings a little bit. But again, at the end of the day, in terms of a match, I'm not really um I'm not really like thinking about that at all. Uh, sucks to miss out on that half million. Though. Well, that's the other. That's what I was going to get to. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens because there are two possibilities. There's possibility number one, which is that Fide completely caves. Like there, there's possibility number one, which is Fide completely caves. And they're like, okay, we got it all wrong. What format do you want? We'll do your format. That that is that is option one that could happen. Um, I don't rule that out. I think it's very low. I think there's probably like 10% chance, but I wouldn't, but I don't think it's implausible if he is like, okay, we messed up. We're going to do whatever you want. Um, I, I, I assume that that's not going to happen, but I still think there is a window for that to happen. Um, but I, as I said, I think it's 10%, 10%, 10% at best. Um, 
Now, the second thing is I wonder how they're really going to raise sponsorship money for this event because it's not really very attractive in many ways. I mean, maybe they can get a big sponsor in China to, to support the match, although China, again, they, they seem to not be doing a whole lot with chess, oddly. Um, so if they don't get a big Chinese sponsor, I don't really see how you're going to find a big sponsor for this match, um, honestly. So they'll, they, maybe they'll hold the match, but it's not going to have the prize from the ma matches with Magnus. Alibaba Chess World Championship, I, I don't think Alibaba is in any state to do that right now because the government is... Uh, cracking down on them so um that's that's just my my read on the players now we will move into the uh to the episode we're going to listen to it as well they'll sponsor it is china china has not been big on chess they have a lot of very strong players but they haven't really organized that many major events i, I don't really know why why that is so anyway um and then yeah magnus changed Ma Ma i completely agree i think magnus would play if, if i got second yeah i think that's the case but again as i've said to people you you know you only have so much time in this life you only have so much time that you want to be thinking about things you want to think about things that are productive things that are useful and thinking about what ifs is not useful no matter who you are so i i will say that you know going back and looking at the, oh i could have drawn the game oh i should have played rook takes d1 oh i should have drawn the game yeah it would have been nice but you don't know what would have happened so i'm not really thinking about the what ifs because you're never in that what that what if can't become a reality so um so that's why for me it's not it's actually not a big deal i, I know a lot of people are going to be like oh copium 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 but the, you know the 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 last point i'm going to add before we jump into the um jump into the uh into the podcast is the one thing i will say is that if there's anyone who should have possibly been able to see this coming it is me and the reason that i say that is because uh, when I look at what happened in the last couple of years with COVID, the way that I became a streamer, when I played, I'll give you an example. When I played in Berlin, I did very, very well in Berlin, okay? I, I played well in the Grand Prix, qualified for the candidates. Um, but after the after the second or the third FIDE Grand Prix in Berlin, there were quite a few people who thought that I was going to come back and start playing chess full time. They thought that I'm just like, okay, I'm going to come back and play full chess, play chess full time. I'm just making up all this nonsense about streaming. I'm just going to shut it down and I'll I'll go back to to playing the game. Um, and obviously that is not true. What I said was what I meant. So you know, there, I, if there's anyone who should have been able to think that maybe Magnus's mindset and everything had changed, it it could have been me. But again, at the end of the day, I, I assume that Magnus's love of the love of the game of the chess would override um his, his uh, complaints or his his issues with the format or not wanting to play the 14 game match so anyway um all right so let's move on we're, we're gonna move to the uh we're, we're gonna move over to the the podcast now so let me adjust it so we it looks a little bit better give me a second the motivation right now to play the match therefore hikaru be oh one second let me make this a little bit bigger all right there we go um this is a vimeo i guess there we go let me make it a little bit smaller and alas away we go all right so let's let's watch this uh let's, let's watch this podcast i how long is it i don't it's what oh it's only two minutes so this will be pretty fast i assume it's gonna be a bit longer um i don't know why why is the podcast only two minutes it's kind of weird but anyway all right let's go let me turn the volume up too but <laughs> the gist of it was that i was there to tell them that um i would not defend my title in um in the next world championship match um and we had a small discussion they had some suggestions uh some of them i liked some of them i did uh, did not but ultimately um the conclusion stands um one that i'm pretty comfortable with um one that i thought a lot about um for a long time now i would say more more than a year probably a year and a half almost since long before the last match um and i've spoken to yeah why does it look so sad in, I, I don't in, get it in my team i've spoken to fida uh i spoke to um to jan as well uh and the conclusion is yeah it's very simple that i am not motivated to play uh another another match i i feel that um Yeah, I sim I I simply feel that I don't have 
uh, a lot to gain. I don't particularly, um, I don't particularly like it. And um, although, um, uh, although I'm sure a match would be, would be uh, interesting for historical reasons and 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 all of that. I don't have any inclinations to play, and I will. And I will simply not play the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, okay. So so yeah. So that that was like the that was just a, that was just two minutes. Two X speed. The guy is a slow talker. No, I mean I I understand. That. I I I think his it depended on a few things. But like I said, I'll tell you what I think the underlying reason is. I think the underlying reason at the end of the day is that he did not enjoy the style of the match that he had against Fabiano and and Jan. It was they were very very solid players. It's very hard to be creative, get interesting games. Um, until of course Magnus won game six, and then of course everything opened up. But up until that point, I think that was the main thing is that the players, because the players are just so solid, like what's gonna happen is I'll tell you what would happen. If he if he goes to a training camp for Jan, what's he gonna do? He's probably gonna spend like weeks on end looking at very, very small ideas in the Petrov, like you know, little little move order line, little move orders, some some kind of weird sidelines, all sorts of little, little, little things, and you hope that just one of them can hit. Um and that's not really fun to do. I mean, I, I I haven't done that for months on it. I of course haven't done it for like a world championship match. But I know the feeling of where like for weeks on end you're look you're looking at like some some opening that's super super boring, super super dry, and it's so hard to play creatively in any way, shape, or form. So I think underlying it all is is that's that's one of the most underlying things. Um, at the end of the day, is I think it's just the fact that it's not fun to do the preparation. You're gonna be playing very very boring games. Um, and it's and if something goes wrong, even one game, for example, like. You know, you think about the Fabio. I think if you look at the Fabiano match, Magnus was very, very solid throughout the match. But there was that one game, like game eight or game nine, where he got this magical fortress with the bishop and pawns against the bishop and knight. Um, but if he if he had lost that game, just because that one game he would have lost because that one little slip. And so I, I think that ultimately that's the underlying reason is that everybody's playing so solid, it's becoming so boring that he doesn't want to spend like six months preparing for that, then have a bunch of draws and then have it come down to like a rapid tiebreaker. So I think that's, um, I think that's the underlying reason about it. Um, is that chess nowadays? I get why Bobby Fischer hates chess. Well, I'll tell you this, you guys, uh, one thing that's interesting is if Ali Reza had won the match, had won the candidates though, I don't think Ali Reza would have been playing the style of very solid chess. He would have been playing much more aggressively because he's a lot younger and that leads to a more open match very, very creative play, a lot of variety in the openings, and Magnus would have loved that. He would have loved that, for sure. So that's also, I think, a large part of it, too, is, is I think that having played Jan and knowing the way that Jan was going to approach the match, it's like it's going to be more the same that he'd deal with with Fabiano as well. So that that's just my read of it as, as, as a chess player, having played the game for so long. I mean, obviously, I could be wrong on that. It's, it's definitely possible. Um, but I do think that's the underlying part of it, is that he wants more creativity, more variety, more more, more like interesting chess as opposed to having to play the Petrov every day. I think that that's the underlying reason. But again, nobody really knows, including myself. I mean, obviously everyone was wrong on whether he would whether he would play or not play. But that's my that's my that's my guess on the underlying part. Huge speculation. It can be speculation, but but again, I, I would say that I haven't played Magnus many many times. You see the you see these games in like the online events, the rapid events. You get a lot of openings, a lot of creativity, a lot a lot of variety every every everywhere. Um, so that that's that's um. That's that's what that's what that's what I would say um, about it. That's just my that's just my take as a pro chess player. Now, of course, I could be completely wrong. There are a couple other things that I will talk about as well, which is another big question is with Magnus stepping away from the world championship. What happens to Chess Twenty Four? Now, Chess Twenty Four, of course, has built its brand around Magnus being the world champion. He's um, uh, he's he's obviously well. We don't know. Like I said, I think there's still like a five percent chance that he that he could uh, that Fide might just like literally. Is it go carte blanche and say, okay, we're, we're wrong. We did everything wrong. But, um, but regardless, let's assume that, 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 that doesn't happen. Um, what happens at chess 24 and with a former world chess champion, not the world champion combined with, I would say, honestly, the, the, the very low viewership for the online events. I think it, 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 uh, portends very poorly for the future of chess 24. Um, for sure. A absolutely. I think it's uh very, it's not good. It's not good for them. It's not good at all. So that's, that's what I would say. Um, Magnus should, should sell his shares and join chess.com. Right, exactly. Um, but no, but I mean, I'm not saying he's not still Magnus, but I would say again, 
when you're trying to pitch something you can't say world champion though it changes things like i'm just saying honestly it changes things so uh that that's that's what i'm saying it's like when you go to a sponsor you approach them and you say you say former world champion yeah that's still that's still good but it's not the same thing as saying world champion um so the the effect on chess 24 remains to be seen obviously i mean who who knows but i don't think it's good i, I think i think it can only be bad for for chess 24 that that's that that's my take on the situation um as far as chess, chess 24 goes um yeah, former world champion is is so weird to say. It is absolutely, absolutely. It's it's very uh, it's, it's very strange. Uh, you can say five times world champion. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's true. You you could say that, but <laughs> anyway, it changes nothing. You can say world number one. Yeah, but you guys, I I will say this. I mean, uh, obviously, having dealt with spons- sponsors, sponsorships, and things like that, when you can say you're the world champion, that means a lot more than saying number one. I mean, heck, for a long time, I could say I was the number one blitz player in the world. Okay, big deal big deal i mean you, you when you're dealing with sponsor you're talking outside the chess world i mean i could have said i'm, I'm the number one blitz player in the world or i'm the number one rap player in the world that it's not the same thing you guys it's just not the same thing so anyway um uh gary, gary kasparov is the goat gary was great i mean I, I am surprised that magnus did this because with magnus doing this uh now it actually opens the door for people to kind of maybe say that gary was uh was the best ever that's the that's the one thing i'm jealous yes you guys i'm so so jealous i'm so jealous what can i say i'm so jealous of everyone the one thing i was gonna say however is that you know now reddit can get mad at me for another reason reddit can get mad at me because i as i said i'm pretty sure that if i had finished second max would have played the match now reddit reddit can blame me for basically ruining ruining chess and, and leading to magnus's uh magnus not defending his title so all right <laughs> anyway you guys okay so we have some stuff uh, i'm going to cover some tweets as well i think we're going to actually cover the grand chess tour especially with magnus having uh having retired or sorry having uh given up his world world championship title um we will we will probably go there since now of course there should be some added benefits so let's let's see we have some tweets um okay what, what's this oh first one let's start with this one we have this one which is a tweet i think you guys can see it let me adjust it just a little bit um let me adjust this just a touch here we go. So we, we have this tweet. Uh, let me make it just a touch bigger. Um, now, this was a tweet from, I believe. Or wait, actually, sorry, I, I can make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see the whole thing. Um, this was a tweet that I saw earlier on Twitter, which is pretty funny. Actually, you see, it says, send, your, send the CV to Jan. Has to be written in Russian. Peter Heine Nielsen having a real job. Magnus Carlsen abdicates. Yeah, but, you know, on the, on the other hand, you know, you know now, now at least... Now at least now Peter Peter Heine can continue getting into nonstop arguments um, on Twitter all day long. So uh, th- there's always that that thing he can do. So eh, that's what it is. Anyway, okay. Next uh, next one. Next one we can get to. We have a tweet from MVL, which this this was uh, this is MVL in the World Championship. I think I think it's not adapted to our times. I thought there were probably better ways of deciding the World Champion. It was maybe time for a change, and maybe this move by Magnus will be a catalyst. Now again. You can't see the top. Sorry, you're right. It's touch off. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, there, there we go. I mean, you, you can say it's not adapted to times. You know, as I said before, I think, the, I think the problem with the whole, whole situation is that uh, there isn't really a good in between because Fide ha- added the World Rapid and the World Blitz Championship. Because there's a World, World, World Rapid and World Blitz, I don't. I, I don't see how you can make that change. That, that's, the, that's the thing at the end of the day is that with there being these two other world championship tournaments, it just, it doesn't seem logical to me. I th- without those two tournaments, I think you could. How am I feeling now? You missed a chance to become world champion. Yes, you guys. The fact is, I would say with 90%, I, I think 90% is where I'd put it. Um, Magnus would have played. I think 90% Magnus would have played if, um, if I had finished second. So I don't think about what ifs. I think worrying about what ifs, and this is just general life advice. If you think about what ifs or you know what you could have done differently at this time or that time, that's just a weak mindset. And you're going to be living in the past and you're going to be thinking about all these things that you could have done instead of focusing on the present and what you can do here and now to improve things or focus on whatever you're up to. So, that, so when people think that somehow I'm supposed to be super angry, I'm not. Anyway, let's keep going. We have another tweet from, uh, from, Jan, or from Anish. Let's see. Let's see. What did Anish come up with? um dibs on one ding to rule them all t- rule them all tweet uh if ding becomes world champion one ding to rule them all <laughs> that's a good one um yeah good one one ding 